Rando. Hello. Nice to meet you. Welcome you. to our show. Thank you for having me. Rando, I know you have a long story to tell us, yes. but first of all, I'd like to, as usual, to introduce yourself to our audience first. Uh, I'm Randall Dale Chipcar, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, campaigning worldwide to encourage the motorcycle industry to keep riders safer. And what is your daily job? I'm a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And you have your own business? Uh, family business for 47 years. Oh, 47 years. Yes. And how's the business going for the economic downturn time? Well, it, it's, it's, it's a business that's up and down mm -hmm. at all times, but um, whether people are buying up or buying down, there's always activity. Right. Um, we have lots of clients and uh, uh, chip car real estate in Mississauga is very well known, so we do pretty good. How would you describe your business since the brothers took the business? Well, uh, my dad is still around. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but he's not doing, he's not my working. My dad retired anymore. many, many years ago, but he comes in every day, very, very early. Monitoring. Oh, sure. <laughs> it never ends. You yourself have been a rider and uh, you ride motorcycle for how many years? I was a uh, <laughs> long time. Um, casual rider, I'd right. like to say oh. that, not mm -hmm. an avid rider, mm -hmm. but I always loved motorcycles. I grew up around motorcycles, uh, motorcycle races and things like that. Right, right. You know, just like any other person that got on that road. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up with motorcycles and uh, I love them. Getting out of high school, uh, I had a, a few scholarships mm -hmm. and life got busy. Uh, riding became a little uh, slower. And I, I had a scholarship for electronics, which I turned down. I had my, my future set on, on a career in medicine. Mm. So I went off to uh, uh, London University, and, right. or Western University in London, mm. uh, where I was accepted. And my brother was already there in a pre-medical program. Right. Uh, so that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And then um, riding became very, you know, I was on campus, so I, I didn't really do too much riding during those years. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I wasn't too happy with uh, university. It was a great place. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, a bit of a rebel still, and I, I uh, was contested by my professors. So I think today there's a lot more room for innovation than back then. And uh, my brother and I felt the same, and we were rebels in a world of conformity. Mm -hmm. uh, so we changed our, uh, our, our future goals and went into the family business at that time. Right. So that's why we went into the family business. Mm -hmm. Since then, you feel really uh, fulfilling? Oh, absolutely. You're not a rebel anymore? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> I will always be a rebel. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, I feel that people have to take a stand on what they believe in, mm -hmm. take a stand for truth mm -hmm. and justice and things like that, and yeah. uh, not follow the crowd. Okay. Because things aren't always what they seem. Right. And, and you have to uh, speak up for what you believe. Mm -hmm. And if that's being called a rebel, then yeah. You're still I, a rebel. All of our brothers are rebels, and my dad too. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom too. <laughs> that's another story. Okay. So, several years ago, you found a motorcycle has a problem. It's dangerous for people. What happened? Oh. Uh, it, it's a pretty interesting story. Um, being in the real estate business, I, I have clients that will not live beside hydro tower power lines. They wouldn't even get out of the car. Yeah, I heard that. So I always had a, um, uh, a meter in the car to read the readings of these, what's called electromagnetic, what they're actually called extremely low frequency electromagnetic field radiation. Mm -hmm. And in short, they're called LVMFs. The concern was only three to five milligauss, which is a, a unit of measurement for the intensity of LVMFs. Mm -hmm. Three to five milligauss gave them concern uh, regarding many health issues, including cancer. Uh, so, okay, I understand. I, I, uh, I made sure that I sold people homes that didn't have high readings. Right. And I, I always had this meter with me. Mm -hmm. So, um, with motorcycles, uh, my dream, I felt, and my brother too, we, we felt that it was time to buy our dream bike. Yeah. And you see them being built on TV. I mean, they're, they're just mm -hmm. gorgeous. I mean, this right. is the time to ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're in a, a stage in our life where it can work. Mm -hmm. So, we went to a dealership and... Uh, when I came out of the car, I, I, I grabbed the meter to see if there was any magnetic radiation coming from the engine because I have knowledge about electronics. I knew there was some. Mm. For some reason that day, I grabbed the meter, I walked over to the dealership, and uh, there was this gorgeous bike that was idling by the service shop. It was the same kind that I was going to buy. Mm -hmm. And um, I walked up to it, and I put the meter over the seat, and I almost died. 
uh, the, the bike seat was uh, uh, producing about 40 milligauss of LVMF magnetic field radiation. So that's more than 10 times. Absolutely. And I looked up to see if there was any hydro lines overhead and there was nothing. This crazy magnetic radiation was coming from the seat of the motorcycle. Oh. I couldn't believe it. I called the service guy over and I said, hey man, like what's underneath the seat? Mm -hmm. He said, just a lot of electrical stuff. Mm -hmm. So, y you know, we, we had the guy rev the bike and the readings went over a hundred. Uh, the readings went up and down with the revs. So oh. there's a direct relationship. It was quite shocking because uh, the danger was no longer hundreds of feet away up in the air from hydro towers. Right, right. It was now uh, very excessive and right between our legs. Mm -hmm. So um, needless to say, we didn't buy the motorcycles. Uh, we were going to spend 30000 each on motorcycles mm -hmm. that were pushing cancer controversial radiation into the rider. Mm -hmm. But think no back, way. think back, you yourself felt sweaty because you ride by the motorcycle for many years too for yourself. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, it was shocking. Any way you think about it, mm -hmm. and for all the riders out there, this whole topic is just shocking. Mm -hmm. And the fear factor is built in. Uh, I'm not trying to, to spread fear. Uh, that goes with this whole story. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that can be done about the fear factor. But we can certainly do something about protecting ourselves from this radiation. So since that day, you started to do your research? Um, after the dealership, uh, driving home, it was, I was like a zombie. I mean, on the highway, I would see riders and I would say to myself, you know, did they know about the radiation? How much radiation was, was uh, coming from the bike when you're on the highway now at mm. those speeds? And um, was it just one brand or all motorcycles? Was there a correlation between mm. avid riding of motorcycles and a correlation uh, of cancer diagnosis or mm. other health disorders? Mm -hmm. So um, I had a lot of research to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm that kind of way, I think, because of university. It makes you driven when you want to find answers. Uh, you, you don't want to necessarily uh, take somebody else's word for it. Yeah. You want to dig into mm -hmm. why and how things are happening. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I, um, the first thing I did was jump on the Internet like anybody else would. I mean, the information highway. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see if there was anything about a, a correlation between riding motorcycles and cancer. Uh, I couldn't find one sentence around the world. What I did find, though, was um, countless riders that rode uh, motorcycles avidly and uh, they were diagnosed with cancer. And a lot of these courageous riders felt that they had beat the cancer only to have it return halfway through a long campaign ride to raise awareness for cancer. Uh, it also raised more questions for me. For example, were the cancers hereditary? How long did the people ride uh, before they were diagnosed? and how high were the radiation readings on their bikes. Uh, I wasn't happy with the internet anymore because not everybody puts their experience on the internet. So I went to so the streets. So started to go on the road and meet people. I went on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought my campaign on the road to meet strangers mm -hmm. to talk about cancer. Mm -hmm. And I was nervous because, you know, no one's going to talk about cancer, not right. to a stranger, especially bikers. Uh, people they're very private with their, their uh, personal health issues. Mm -hmm. And I knew that, but I, again, I was driven. I needed to find out more. Uh, so I, um, I went up to strangers, I rented bikes, I went to rider, riding promo events, I read bikes, I read my friends' bikes. Uh, I can tell you that uh, some of the nicest people that I met were the roughest looking bikers that you see <laughs> on the road. Uh, these guys, uh, they're intelligent people, mm. and uh, they were the nicest people, and, and I found, I was amazed, I found that when people understood the issues, they were very open mm -hmm. about talking about cancer and health disorders. I found that the biker guys were not only very knowledgeable people, but they understood about EMFs and they knew about them, mm -hmm. but they never thought about it being underneath their seat. Right. And it was, again, quite shocking.